Okay, guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, if you've already been watching and subscribed, you'll see we picked up a swap hog roll off system. And this is probably the first time I've shown this truck yet. We bought a 2018 F550 used. Uh, it's now 2023, so it's about five years old. It's got 40,000 miles on it, and it's got this airflow dump body. So we're going to be taking that off. We're going to be putting a swap hog roll off on it, building a custom flatbed. But I figure, figure I'd just give you guys a little walk around of it. It ain't uh, it ain't really in bad shape. You can see the truck frame's got a little rust on it. But actually, most of that is the hoist. I mean, you're talking from the frame, main frame up. The hoist is really what's rusty. We'll paint the frame up on the truck. Give a nice fresh coat of paint on the wheels. Clean all that up. We're going to get new tires for it all the way around. We're also going to put wheel covers over that so you won't see it anyway. But this bed's for sale, possibly, by the time you guys were seeing this video. It's 11 foot airflow. It's got a uh, cold chute, I think, on the back. Yep, it's got a cold chute and it's two way. But anyway, we're taking all that off. So actually, I'm going to start working on that, getting this thing ripped apart. Uh, I got a couple repairs to do to the body before we send it on its way. And we're going to be upfitting it with the swap hog. So we'll see you guys in the shop, but I figured I'd show you what we're getting into. And you've already seen the swap hog. So this might answer some of your questions of. What's the swap hog for? Yep, just this truck here. It's a 6.7 liter power stroke diesel V8. It's got four wheel drive. Just an XL, final, final seats and everything, which is fine. 41,000 miles, pretty basic, nothing too crazy. Actually, we haven't owned an XL like this in a while. We have another XL, but it's actually done up a little better. Change engine oil soon. Oh, man. She cranks right up, and it's been sitting out here for a few weeks. So, look at I already did some service on it. Now I'm going to start working on the body, getting this thing all squared away, so... Upfitter switches. We'll be painting it, putting a beacon on it, putting toolboxes on it, all that sort of stuff. So, be a couple weeks worth of work, but it's pretty exciting. Well, this part of the video kind of sucks because I was just editing it and realized I lost a ton of footage from doing this build. I had all the footage of me taking the bed off, taking the bumper off. To actually taking the whole the whole bed right off the truck that was quite the fiasco and somehow i lost all of it and then i lost a bunch of footage within so unfortunately this is going to be a lot of snippets together i'm going to try to go out to the truck it's already done assembled and i'm going to try to point out some of the stuff that i would say is important for your swap hog install if you do it like i did with the bolt-on style so i'm really disappointed i don't know how that happened but i lost a ton of video anyway so I hope you guys still enjoy the rest of the video. This is our current project right here. This is the Switch and Go flatbed, which is also in production in a video sense. So I'll show you how I built this, give you some measurements and stuff like that that are important, and uh, carry on. We'll get it all done. So that's what we're working on. All right, let's get at it. Okay, time to bring the hoist in. I got kind of a mess here. But I got it chained up there. We're going to bring it in, set it down on the wooden blocks and I'm gonna get some measurements off it.
All right, I just want to point this out real quick while I'm going to pause the video. My truck frame was actually too short by about a half an inch or so. I actually ended up adding back a half an inch right on the end of the frame. I don't know if it came from the factory like that or if it was cut off when they put the original bumper on there, but it really screwed with my placement of my rear hinge bolts. So that's something to take into account beforehand. I ended up moving the hoist forward about half an inch initially and then I added that half an inch back to give me some bolting area but I should have just added it on extra and then drilled my holes after. Okay, like I told you before with this truck, I lost a ton of footage on installing the swap hog. So I wanted to go over some of the key points that I had to take away on the install. What I liked, what I didn't like, what could have been done better, and what would I do next time, or what could they improve upon with the next one. So, first I'll just take you around the truck and show you everything. I got my def hoses routed underneath and around the front with a tie back, back to the frame of the hoist and weld it into place. Okay, one thing that I really liked about the swap hog, and I think switching goes doing the same thing, so don't quote me though, is this electrical connector right here with the harness up for the controller in the cab. Previously on the switching goes, you used to have a junction box right here and you bring all your wires in and connect them and it was a whole thing. You had to get all the wires in the right place, all this nonsense, yada, yada, yada. Now it's just a simple plug. In this case, I brought the wiring up down along the frame here and it comes up in the cab, back of the cab right here. I don't know if you can really see that. Probably not too dark. I drilled an inch in the 16th hole. I got some grommets and I grommeted it and I sent the plug through. It's a big plug. It's a really small wire with a big plug on the end. So it's kind of tough to drill any size smaller than the hole that is the size of the plug. And then I ran the controller from the cab back, and now that kind of just sits up in here. And it pops out behind the seat, and here's the controller. Uh, the controller I really like. It's a nice controller, much easier to use up, down, in, out, versus having to switch positions between winch and hoist. So that's a huge plus. I think that controller is ideal, although it is pretty big, so we have to deal with that. Mounting, it's going to be tough. I don't think I'm going to be able to. All right, so the next thing on... Moving on, we got this hydraulics. One thing I noticed between this and the switch and go, much bigger hoist, or much bigger cylinder, I should say. Same pump. I think this thing actually kind of lifts slower than the switch and go. I'm assuming because it has to move much more volume to fill up the cylinder to push it. Obviously, this is some strength, but in terms of speed, I think the switch and go is a little faster. This cover is super nice to be able to maintain everything or protect everything underneath it. Versus the Switch and Go Gen 1, which only had some plastic covers with zip ties. Moving along, the bolt-on stuff. I did a full bolt-on here, so this is a bolt-on, bolt-on. Wasn't too bad, but drilling through this frame is tough because on the Fords, they had the double frame with the bracing. So you got like a regular frame, double frame bracing, which makes it tough to, to drill through. But we got it done. Body lock here. This I think they could have done a little bit better. Made it it's nice on the outside kind of but it also I had to lower this cup down for it to slide across because they put it in the wrong spot from the factory I had to lower all that and you got to lift this thing up considerably so it doesn't hit because it right right there about two inches but I'm 
you know, eight inches from the from the nose cup up here to this, which means when I go to lower it, even once I clear the cup up here, I got to keep going or it's going to hit down there. So if that was on the inside and it was supported, actually it wouldn't even bother with the body because the body doesn't hit it. Yeah, they could just do that. If they flip flop this to the inside, right? There's nothing in the way up there really besides that hoist arm, which you could put it wherever you wanted at that point, but it wouldn't interfere with the body at all, which would be nice. Okay, so moving along, not a lot of bolts, or not a lot of drilling in the, the frame. It was only one bolt per spot. You got one back here, two, three, four per side, plus the rear plate here in the back. This I did a bolt-on design as well. So there's two bolts that come down from the top. It'll actually be like this, and this plate right here. Bolt them in, do that before you put the bumper on. You have to pull this pin out. On the other side, there's a little Allen key and a cotter pin. You pull that out, you pull the pin out, and actually lift the back of the hoist up. Put your bolts and hardware in. Hardware is going to be a little bit long. I found that these two, this bolt right here, and this bolt coming down, run into each other, which make it a little tough. And getting these on, especially getting wrenches on the back of them, nearly impossible. Because there's not a lot of room to fit your hand up in there. Because there's a gusset. Alright, this is the back plate here. And then you have... <clears throat> the cross member of the truck so you're kind of fitting your hand up in there to get that done this is a bolt-on cone rack that i did just drilled two holes in some old channel i had nice and strong i built it to the same specs as my other one no problem with these light bars out here these are pretty nice i wish they would have done it i just put a strobe light in there to make it easy uh, if i had any recommendation spend the extra money get the stainless steel fuel filler neck I ended up building this one from scratch, and it took a lot of time. I could have just attached it and been done. This, I just did a simple bolt-on angle iron, or weld-on angle iron for the mud flaps. I like to keep them not attached to the fenders, because I've had these rip off before. So this will be the first truck that's never had a fender with a mud flap on it, so hopefully they last a little longer. I like these fleet engineers, but they cost way too much to ship them to me when they break, so I end up putting buyer's ones on after. It does mount into the sub frame, the hoist frame, the subframe of it. Two bolts. That wasn't too hard to do. The metal's not that thick because they make like an S channel. But it is sitting right on top of my uh, spring pad here. And so does this uh, body lock. It sits on the support for the uh, fender because it doesn't sit back on its own little adapter. It doesn't fit. So moving along to the other side real quick. This body is just a body we've had for a few years that we kind of custom built. It wasn't just a regular flatbed. We turned it into a roll-off bed. So, not, uh, not too bad. Anyway, so move along to this side. It's kind of the same deal on this side. Everything kind of carries over. One thing that I did just run into with this system, because it's got this massive body lock, my ladders on my other truck are not going to clear this at all. So I'm going to have to modify this a little bit, probably notch some of this out so that my ladder will kind of fall into this crevice here. My ladders are just too far forward and I really had nothing I could do to control that because it's the cards we were dealt with this one. Um, the switch and goes have like a, well they used to, the Gen 1's had a single hook point here so nothing was ever in the way. So this was kind of a new new thing building with the old spec so we'll deal with that i guess same thing on this side with the body lock or the hinge plate i got some gusseting in here i got some gusseting up in the front there and more gusseting in the back or shimming i should say for all that down there got a piece of angle iron i put it here on both sides on the toolbox just to do a little tie back to make these things bounce a little bit less these were just existing brackets i had from another project i bolted in place and attached to and then you got the hold down for the tarp we'll put a mesh tarp here with some bungees over top of it to protect it so that's pretty much the walk around of what i can think of right now like i said they made it tough to kind of center this thing up because the hoist was not as wide as the truck because the um, double frame in some of these areas so that was kind of a negative but i guess there's a fix to that there which is too late for me, but 
they're working on making it a little bit better. So you can see that. Pour a sandwich is all in here. Anyway, yeah, it, it works pretty good. I put this bed up on there, pretty smooth, nice, quiet, with the worn winch. So, 
I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with it right now. I would probably buy another one in two years or so, so they can work out some more kinks with it. But you gotta start somewhere. So anyway, that'll wrap up this video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. And our next project is gonna be this truck right here, sanding it down and we're gonna be painting it blue to match graphics, the whole nine. All that'll be getting done next, so. All right, you'll be seeing the video on that flatbed after that. And then the paint job on this truck. And we're going to be rolling into our season here pretty shortly. It's already March 3rd. So we'll be getting ready to start some landscaping. So, all right, guys. See you in the next one.